All right, what's up guys? Today we're going to be talking about how to turn a Raspberry Pi 4 and an external hard drive into an actually pretty decent NAS for your home network. So the acronym NAS stands for Network Attached Storage. So basically all a NAS is at its simplest term is a hard drive that you can reach from your network. The nice thing about this is that means that anyone else who's on your network can all store files all on the exact same drive. And it's always there. It's especially great for laptops. You don't need to have anything plugged in if you've got Wi-Fi. All you have to do is connect to the drive and mount it and you have access to all the files that are on that drive. Now there are two reasons why we really want to be using a Raspberry Pi 4 for this rather than any of the earlier models. And that's because it's got one, a true gigabit ethernet connection. That way we will get the fastest speeds out of it possible. And two, it's got two full speed USB 3 ports, which means it's got a really fast connection to your external hard drive. For this demonstration, I'm using a stock Raspberry Pi 4 without any cooling or anything and with only one gig of RAM and an actually pretty fast portable Samsung SSD. It's part of the T-series of their external SSDs and I actually have really liked the performance on this thing. I really like that it's USB-C compatible and that it's got a really small form factor. I can always just throw it in whatever bag I've got and not think twice about it. For this project, an SSD is really not necessary because we're going to be limited by that gigabit connection, which ends up being about 110 megabytes per second read and write once you account for the network overhead of using a NAS. So just about any external hard drive will do. But because I am using an SSD, it's gonna be very low power, which means I don't have to have a separate power supply. If you are using an external hard drive, I would recommend buying one of the desktop ones with its own power supply or buying a powered USB hub as the Raspberry Pi supplies very little power over the USB bus. So for this project, we're missing one of the things that comes in most stock NASs, which is a RAID configuration. A RAID configuration basically uses multiple hard drives all at the same time to get one faster hard drive. And generally, unless it's RAID 0, it has drive failure protection. This means if you're using something like RAID 5, you can lose an entire hard drive in your array, and you will still have all of your data accessible. Though if you lose another one, you would lose all that data. I'm not going to go into it here, but basically what it does is it does a bunch of math with all of your data, and the result of that math is stuck on an extra hard drive. Then if you were to lose one of your hard drives due to drive failure, it will be able to recreate the data that was saved on that drive. It is possible to use RAID 1 by setting up two external hard drives with your Raspberry Pi. However, that's going to be in a later tutorial. This video is all about making a really inexpensive, low power storage solution for someone's home network. Though especially because there is no drive redundancy in the setup, I would recommend having another backup solution for any of the data you're going to be serving on here. Drive failures are not that common, but when they do, it's going to be awful if you were to lose all those critical family photos or things like that. And storage is cheap. You can even set up a remote backup, like I've got this tutorial here. Self-promotion! Alright, so for this tutorial, your Raspberry Pi needs to be able to do two very simple things. One, you've got to be able to SSH into it and two, it needs some kind of static IP address. You can either set up a static IP address from your router, giving it to your Raspberry Pi, or just request one using your Raspberry Pi. If you've not set up your Raspberry Pi yet to do these two things, I've got a video in the description that'll go over that for you. All right, so once you've SSH into your Raspberry Pi, the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually initialize the drive. And to do this, we're gonna use FDisk. So first, we've got to see what the drive is. So we're going to do sudo fdisk-l to list. So fdisk-l lists out everything that has storage. This includes your RAM modules and a bunch of other things. But down here at the bottom, we're going to see dev sda. That is device storage device A. And it is the correct size, 465 gigabytes. So that's how we know what it is. We can also see that down here, I've already got two partitions on it, which means I'm going to have to delete those to start. 
So the first thing we're going to do is do sudo fdisk, and then we're going to type in this path right here. And so because I already had these two partitions, we're going to go ahead and delete them using D. We're going to delete the first, then D, and then the second. All right, so our two partitions have now been deleted. And so we're going to be able to go ahead and set up a new one. So to set up a new one, we're going to hit N, and partition number one, default, default, and default. It's really simple. Anytime it's a default, just hit enter. And FDisk basically sets it up for you. All right, and so as we can see here, we now have one partition of type Linux file system, and the size is 465.7 gigabytes, which is exactly what we want. So because we're happy with that, we're gonna hit W to write, and it's going to create the partition mapping. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is actually format it to the Linux file system by doing sudo make file system, dash T for type, and ext4, and then we're gonna do that same path, dev, SDA, except now we're going to be doing it on SDA1 because that's that partition that we created. All right, and just like that, we've successfully formatted the drive to ext4, which is a common Linux file system that I would recommend. Though one thing to note, you're not gonna be able to just take this drive out and plug it into a regular computer now, unless it runs Linux, but everyone's still gonna be able to access this over the network. All right, so now we've got the drive formatted and set up, but it's not mounted anywhere. So to do that, we're first gonna create a point to mount it. And I like to do this at the highest root level. So I'm gonna do sudo make dir, and we'll just call it volume. And so now if we go to the root level in LS, we can see this volume right here. All right, and so now we're actually gonna go ahead and mount the drive to this location using sudo mount the dev path and that backslash volume that we created. All right, and so now it should have mounted. Let's go ahead and CD into it. And it looks like it worked. All right, and so now we're gonna go ahead and make sure that it worked by doing df-h which basically shows all the free space, which I like to do best. And so as we can see here, under backslash volume, which is that folder, there are 458 gigs free, and it's mounted to there. So that means everything has worked. All right, so now that the drive is mounted, let's go ahead and see if we can do anything. So we're gonna do a touch test. And as we're gonna see here, we've got permission denied. That's because when we mounted it, it only gave root access to it. So to change this, we're gonna do sudo chmod 777-r recursive, period. So basically what this is, is it's a sudo for root level, change modification writes, 777 gives everyone read, write, and execute, dash r does it recursively, and period does it in place. So now we're gonna do a touch test again, and it successfully worked. All right, and so now we've got the folder successfully mounted. However, as soon as we reboot this Raspberry Pi, it's gonna go away. So let's see what happens. All right, so I've just SSH back into my Pi after it rebooted, and now let's see what happens when we go into that volumes folder. There's nothing in there. That's because when we rebooted, it did not remount on boot up. So we need to specify that our Raspberry Pi will mount the drive as soon as it boots up. So to do this, we're gonna edit the fstab file using sudo nano etc fstab. All right, so the fstab file basically lays out all the drives that are gonna be connected on boot. So all we have to do here is add a new line. So you can use the part UUID, however, honestly, that's kind of cumbersome, and if you're using this as a NAS and not gonna be removing the drive, it's not really needed. So instead, we're just gonna use that same dev location that we've been using. So dev sda1, 
And now we're gonna say where we'd like to mount it to, which is backslash volume. Then you're gonna say what type it is, which is ext4. And you're gonna give it the permissions, which I would say defaults, and then zero, two. And that's all you need to do. So now we hit control X to exit, yes to save, and enter to save it. All right, and so now let's try another sudo reboot and see what happens. All right, so I've just SSH back in, and now let's go back in that volume. As we can see here, there's that file we've got there, and let's just make sure we can write to it still. And we can still write to it. So that means the drive is all set up. And every time we reboot the Raspberry Pi, it will automatically mount that drive there. All right, so I'll just go ahead and clear it and give us some space because our next step is going to be to install Samba, which is what we're using for this. Samba is a great Linux app that lets you use SMB so that way you can connect from any system, Mac, PC, or even Linux. So to do this, we're going to first do a sudo apt get update to update our packages. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a sudo apt get install Samba. Yes. And it's gonna go ahead and install all of Samba's dependencies. All right, so now it's installed, so I'll just go ahead and clear it and give us some space. All right, so the first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is edit the Samba config file by typing sudo nano. All right, and so through here, it's got pretty straightforward settings on how to do everything. And we're just gonna go ahead and go to the bottom. And so we're just gonna go ahead and create our own configuration. The first line is what you use to create the name. So we're just gonna call this pi. NAS. And you do that in brackets. And the next thing, it needs a path. So just type path and the path to that mounted folder. And then to keep ourselves from being locked out, we're going to do writable equals yes. That means we'll be able to write to it. Then we only want authenticated users to be able to connect to it. So we're going to say public no. This will force only Raspberry Pi users to be able to use this. All right, and that's all the settings we're gonna use. So we're gonna do control X to exit, yes, and enter. Now we just need to restart the Samba service by typing sudo system control restart SMBD. All right, and so now the Samba service is up and running. And so now all we have to do is start granting users access to the share. So first you need to give yourself a password. So we're gonna type sudo SMB password dash A, and then your username on the Pi. And then you can set your new SMB password. All right, and so now let's just go ahead and test it and see if it worked. All right, so I'm on my Mac, which has native SMB support. So to connect to an SMB share, all you have to do is type command K from Finder type in smb colon slash slash and the IP address of your Raspberry Pi. It will give you a warning the first time and then just type in your Raspberry Pi credentials with that new password you just set up. And right here, we can see that we have this Pi NAS folder set up and I was able to connect to it. All right, and so now the NAS is up and running. So let's say we've got another user who we would like to have access to it. All right, so now say you wanna start giving other people permission to this. All you have to do is type sudo add user, oh, add user and add it name, Bob. All right, and so now we've just created a Bob account on the Raspberry Pi and we're gonna give it a password all right, so now that Bob has an account on the Raspberry Pi, we're gonna do the same thing we did for ourselves. So sudo smb password dash a, and this time we're gonna do Bob. And now Bob can type in his password that he would like to use for smb. All right, and it's just that simple. Bob now has authentication access to the Raspberry Pi server. 
All right, and so now is the part that everybody wants to know is how fast is a Raspberry Pi NAS? Well, I've given it its optimal configuration. It's got the gigabit connection and an SSD. So we're going to go for that mounted folder and I'm going to be using Blackmagic disk speed test. And so we'll do a five gig test. We'll set the target drive to the Pi NAS and we're just gonna see how fast we can get this thing going. All right, and so as you can see here, we're actually getting decently close to gigabit speeds on this thing. It sometimes fluctuates because I think the Pi is a little bit overheating, but at its optimal for short file transfers, we're pretty easily getting 90 megabytes per second read and write, which is honestly really good for this. A gigabit connection maxes out at about 110 megabytes per second if you include that network overhead. So honestly, this is really usable. I don't know how this performance would get hit with multiple users trying to connect, but overall for a home network that just needs a common file place for everybody to get access, this is a pretty cheap, pretty low power alternative. All right, well, I hope everybody found that video interesting and had a good time watching it. I had a good time making it. It's kind of an absurd thing, but it works surprisingly well. Go ahead and put any other tutorials you'd like to see me make or projects in the comments below. I always like hearing new things to do. And have a good one. Bye.